Excuse me, little dog. Well, you need to move out of the way. Hi, right, guys. It is an exciting night here in Doomsday Trailer. Here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. It is an exciting Saturday night. Oh, yeah. Just another Saturday night. Oh, here in the collapse of everything. That would be Saturday, January 6th, 2024. And uh, we are still plugging away on the never-ending flooring project. So here at 9.30 on Saturday night, I can finally get around to turning on this box to see how fucked we are today. Let's start out here right on Yahoo News from Politico. The unpredictable but entirely possible events that could throw 2024 into turmoil. And uh, anyway, this is, you know, these never-ending predictions this is from a group that sounds kind of uh, random to me, uh, from Politico. Let's just check in with a, a couple of these. We're going to skip over a message from outer space with the space alien stuff and head into the digital apocalypse and so much more a digital apocalypse and so much more this is by a fellow named charlie sykes who is editor at large at the bulwark whatever that means so what does charlie have to say <clears throat> uh anyway i i'm not even uh, i'm not even uh, going to get into the 24 election, although it seems like most people that they interview are joining Elliot Jacobson and I in predicting that Donald Trump will be our next president. And, and all I'm going to say about it is Donald Trump can thank one person for becoming the next president of the United States. We all know who that person is, and that person is Joe Biden, is single-handedly going to put Donald Trump back in the White House. Enough said on that. But anyway, not counting all of that crap. So what else could go wrong? A hell of a lot because we live in an era of chaos and fragility. The new year is a nesting doll, a nesting doll of unknown unknowns. That is not a reference to Donald Rumsfeld. That is a reference to Carlos Castaneda and the teachings of Don Juan. The unknown unknowns are the ones that are going to get us this year. We could see 1968-like riots at the major party conventions and perhaps a humanitarian disaster at the border. There is already a humanitarian disaster at pretty much every border on the planet. Uh, Internationally, we could see the collapse of an abandoned Ukraine and the subsequent invasion of Taiwan by an emboldened China. We could find ourselves on the brink of a nuclear confrontation amidst a global economic meltdown that would overshadow every other issue. Yep, it will certainly overshadow, overshoot. <clears throat> uh, 
in 2024, we might be hit by a global digital virus. What if the computers and the satellites stopped working for even a few days? What if the virus attacked the world's banking system, vaporizing trillions of dollars of wealth? And since we are contemplating a digital apocalypse, we probably should brace ourselves for AI-generated fakes that could drop days before the election itself. Happy New Year. Uh, days? That about much. And I, a quick peek from uh, our old buddy Bill McKibben showing up in Politico predicting a possible, a possible global warming induced havoc. Take it away, Bill. Given that 2024 seems almost certain to break 2023's global temperature record, and this year was already the hottest in 125,000 years, the physics of global warming indicate that you know, in 2024, we can expect havoc. The precise form this havoc will take and spots it will strike can never be known in advance. Some combination of fire, flood, storm, drought, and sapping heat, but it would be a shock only if it does not happen. And perhaps when it does happen, it will be one more reminder of the folly of electing climate change deniers to high office. Sounds like Bill is predicting uh, a Donald Trump presidency return. Uh, over here at medium.com uh, what is Crystal Rivers is writing about a personal war on positivity or more correctly a rant against disallowing negative feelings and I liked this quote. Uh, facing life and especially the huge challenges in 2024 requires that we quit pretending that everything is okay. Our strength is in admitting some things are truly scary, sorrowful, or even lethal. Our courage is needed, our collaboration depends upon others knowing it is acceptable to feel human. Our supportive life systems require us to notice their suffering. Yep, yep, yep. Uh... And so you might be thinking of where to, uh, you know, the big question, where the hell do you run and hide? And so this is from uh, this article, I think this maybe just came from Facebook, from a fellow by Steve Newby. The best and worst places to live is society collapses. There's nothing really surprising here. Uh, in, in this article, uh, this is the, the obvious worst places to live. We will start with the worst. Uh, surprised he did not mention a, uh, a swamp in Florida. <clears throat> the worst places to live 
here in the opening bell of 2024. Here's the telegram. The greater the population density of your location, the more unstable it will become. Do you think so? Stores will be shuttered. Local police and fire departments will be overwhelmed. Hospitals and emergency services will be maxed out and schools will be closed as a large population begins to compete for resources crime and violence will own the streets that is why urban areas would be some of the worst places to live in a sudden collapse if the grid is down or unreliable the situation in cities will deteriorate quickly and even bugging out could become impossible as roads turn into parking lots overwhelmed by traffic. But here's the caveat. If everyone bugs out of the cities to the countryside, it is possible that the population density of any remote area will suddenly be challenged with the same demands. It almost makes you wonder if some of these ideal bug out locations that are often identified like Idaho, Wyoming, and Maine will become the new mega cities. There are already complaints from some longtime Idaho residents about the sudden influx of outsiders to the state. So, uh, you know, I, I was hoping that when he was talking about the best places to live that, you, you know, he was gonna uh, you know, actually give the areas of, of the uh, country. It's not quite how he played it. So obviously, no shit Sherlock, we just heard the, the worst places, so how about the best places to live? We'll identify some generally safe areas in the United States, but then I don't really see where he did that. But it's important to understand what makes a location safer and what may allow it to maintain those characteristics over time. Here are some of the criteria that define a safer location during a societal collapse. And I like to see the first one, which is abundant natural water resources. I will have to say that bugs in a jar farm in the Finger Lakes of New York has more abundant natural water resources any place I've ever been to. Okay, sufficient arable land for small-scale farming. I can have that one checked in uh, the Finger Lakes. Now, I don't know about stable climate I hear it's supposed to be snowing anywhere between like 6 and 12 inches at Bugs in a Jar Farm in New York tonight, which is why I am sitting in Denellen, Florida. Uh, realistic property values, I will give that okay to the Finger Lakes. A stable population size that can sustain itself without becoming overwhelmed. Uh, there you go. Uh, and then kind of, kind of ironically, community potential. Uh, then of course, sufficiently remote from large cities, jails, interstate highways and nuclear power plants with a minimum of 60 miles of separation generally defined. 
So I feel pretty good in uh, northern Tioga County, New York. Hunting and fishing potential. I've certainly got that one checked off. And of course, uh, abundant trees and forests offering supplies of firewood for heat cooking and building. Good Lord, I was just talking to someone today that I could... Uh, Someone was asking me if I supply firewood at my Airbnb. Good Lord, I've got enough firewood. Uh, anyway. Uh, if you're considering the purchase of a bug out location, think about starting it off as a vacation home or even a few acres of land where you may build someday. Okay, so here we go. Areas in the U.S. that meet these criteria. Uh, rather than list particular towns and states, we're going to identify geographic areas that are loosely defined. Uh, here's the Western Appalachian Mountain Range of the Carolinas, West Virginia, Eastern Kentucky, and Eastern Tennessee. Uh, Tennessee Jed will be glad to hear that. The Ozarks of Northern Arkansas and Southern Missouri. I've had uh, other people talk about the Ozarks. Uh, There's New Hampshire, Wyoming, Idaho, and Maine. We just uh, heard that Idaho might not be this. Uh, anyway, I do not see the Finger Lakes of New York on this man's list. Uh, oh, well. Good luck to the Finger Lakes tonight. But we're going to close with this article just kind of out of nowhere from the French News Service, Africa's, Africa's large birds of prey facing extinction crisis. Uh, talking about dozens of Africa's large birds of prey are facing a human-driven extinction crisis. Previous research has shown that rapid human and agricultural expansion has had a particularly dire impact on vultures in Africa due to habitat change and poisoning. But the new study by researchers, um, blah, 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 found um, that other large birds of prey that do not depend on scavenging and are less vulnerable to poisoning had also suffered similarly severe depletions. Scientists said these large birds of prey in decline face a double jeopardy of increasingly dependent on protected areas. They also have a more restricted habitat. And then what this article does is go into this happy horseshit bullshit hopium uh, about creating protected areas to uh, protect, uh, I, I don't give a shit what it is, uh, the myth of the protected area. So anyway, they, they ramble on about how we're just going to draw some lines uh, on a piece of paper all over Africa and, and, uh, and, and humans are going to stay out. Uh, good Lord. Human threats include shooting, trapping, poisoning, electrocutions or collisions with energy infrastructure, birds killed for food or belief-based reasons, and the animals they prey on are also targeted. Uh, yep, do they ever mention overpopulation? They, they talk about human 
calls, you know what I'm saying, they never mention the word overpopulation. So to protect the birds, researchers point to two solutions. The first is to expand protected areas. Yes. The second is to manage the existing protected areas. This crap goes on. Uh, never mentioning that there's too damn many people in Africa. So we're going to go to the readers of this article to, uh, once again, you have to go to the comments to find uh, some brains uh, about uh, whatever it is about the extin extinction crisis, especially in Africa. All right. We're just going we're just gonna read down some comments. As with so many of our environmental problems, the root cause is human overpopulation all over the world. We just refuse to take responsibility for our own numbers, and thus we are overwhelming the natural world that we depend on for survival. 47 thumbs up, 5 thumbs down. Uh, let's see. This is a fellow named Sam, but not the Sam you might be thinking. Sam. The biggest threats to planet Earth. Human population plus people's lifestyles becoming increasingly demanding of limited resources on Earth. Humans are becoming more and more of the endangering species with the passage of time. 17 thumbs up. Okay, here is Richard. It's not that humans don't know, it's just that most humans don't give a flying fuck. Well, Yahoo News did not say that. It's just that most humans don't care, right up to the point of no return, when we will be the next space species facing extinction on a lifeless planet. 13 thumbs up. Uh, Edgar, humans are destroying everything on the planet. They, meaning we, will go extinct too. Right after that, we're next on the extinction list. Uh, right, next. <clears throat> A basic lack of respect for nature is the most despicable quality of human nature. Here is, nothing stands a chance against man, not even man. And then of course, the uh, we, we hear from the six mass extinction deniers. Uh, which I won't insult your intelligence. The, you know, it's not just the overpopulation deniers. It's the old saw that, uh, and, and it's repeated over and over here uh, in, in, in the comments. You, you know, I'm assuming I need to be careful. Mostly Trump tards saying 99.9% .9 of species that have ever existed on this planet are now extinct. So obviously, uh, the, the birds in Africa are going extinct has nothing to do with humans. That because 99.9% .9 of species have gone extinct on the planet that was not due to humans, that means that we will never have a species of animal go extinct because of humans. The, the, uh, that, that, that's what uh, logical fantasy 
uh, or fallacy, I'm sorry, is that any, anyway. Okay, the problem with the world is too many, pe too many people. There is only one creature on earth that causes the suffering of all the rest. So, I will say what science cannot, I don't know what that means, what science cannot, we have got to curb drastically human population. I'm thinking the most basic uh, principles of ecology would, uh, would agree with that science. Here is reduce family size. Hmm. Should start alleviating a whole lot of problems in a short matter of time. <coughs> How about we can't survive if we kill everything else? Here is human beings are a plague to every living organism on earth. Here is larger human population equals smaller wildlife population. <coughs> Here is so <coughs> in condensed version, either the birds must go or the humans must go. There you go. Uh, here is nature over millions of years designed a system that works. Humanity in 100,000 years has trashed it. How about the human is an extremely invasive species? It is growing in billions and destroying this planet and making all other species extinct. Human population must be controlled, otherwise this planet, of course, meaning life as we know it on this planet, will not survive. There you go. It's not just Africa. Destruction of natural habitats is occurring just about everywhere. How about the planet is groaning under the pressure of human overpopulation. Me, you, and everyone else is the problem. And do not forget in the famous words of Pogo the Possum, we have met the enemy and he is us. Uh, how about shoot the people who are harming these beautiful birds? Yep, yep, yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, don't forget, people would be so much happier if they did not listen to all these gloom and doom mongers out there. I will agree with that statement. Uh, let's see. Here is human beings are a pestilence and our reign will be short-lived in the history of the earth. All right. Uh, how about call the human herd or shut the blank up? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, this goes on and on. Uh, <clears throat> okay, we're going to wind up with some guy calling himself Humpty Dumpty. There is no such thing as a protected area on a planet of 8 billion humans, particularly in Africa, where the human population will double in the next 
30 years, kiss the birds and the elephants. Goodbye. Thank you, Humpty Dumpty. But now that I got that off my chest, I, uh, I need to uh, go over to Netflix for some comic relief. Get out there and get some comic relief while you still can. Bye, guys. Ugh.